Nursing care of patients with upper respiratory disorders. Epistaxis or nosebleeds is one upper respiratory disorder. Causes can be trauma, hypertension, hemophilia, or medications. Sometimes patients get a, a dry nasal cavity in there too, um, and that could be caused from allergies or just um, uh, uh, constant congestion or something like that. And um, they actually end up having to get it cauterized because they constantly have nosebleeds from the skin just cracking in there. Therapeutic interventions for a nosebleed or epistaxis is uh, positioning. Make sure that um, you have them sitting forward with the head positioned down uh, with the chin towards the chest. You can put direct pressure on it. Uh, you can apply ice, and the ice can be applied either directly to the nose or to the back of the neck. Um, if it's severe, the patient may need nasal packing. Sometimes um, they can put a nasal balloon in there. And uh, the other things they might use are vasoconstrictive agent or electrocautery, where they go in there and burn the nose. Uh, this is just a slide showing the um, nasal packing and how it's put in, and so sometimes that can help. Nasal polyps are usually benign. They occur more often with people who have allergies. Treatments are to help control the allergies, surgery if necessary, and after surgery they need to avoid aspirin. Deviated septum, uh, this can occur from a couple of things. Uh, injuries, um, symptoms are stuffy nose, blocked sinus drainage, headaches, and treatment is nasoseptoplastic. Post-op nasoseptoplastic care, you need to monitor for vital signs and bleeding. Uh, generally, excess swallowing is a sign of bleeding. Teach the patient um, how to monitor the dressing that's on the nose or being used and teach them to avoid activities that increase pressure. Also, they should avoid aspirin. Sinusitis, this is inflammation of the sinus mucosa. It can be bacterial or allergic. Signs and symptoms are going to be pain over the affected sinuses, fever, and nasal discharge. Therapeutic interventions for these patients are uh, saline irrigations, steroids or corticosteroids, decongestants, hot packs, uh, acetaminophen or ibuprofen. They can sometimes use humidification to stop the dryness, oral fluids to help with the secretions, uh, positioning, uh, especially if they're having a lot of drainage, and um, antibiotics and surgical drainage. Infectious disorders, we have rhinitis, which is where the mucous membranes become infected or irritated and they produce a clear, usually discharge. Uh, pharyngitis, which is inflammation at the back of the throat, known as the pharynx, and that results in a sore throat or fever and fever. <clears throat> Laryngitis, in which the vocal cords become inflamed or irritated. The patient can present with hoarseness, pain in the throat, and difficulty speaking and swallowing. And then tonsillitis, which is inflammation of the tonsils, and that usually has a quick onset. It's a type of pharyngitis, and the patient will have a sore throat, fever, enlargement of the tonsils, difficulty swallowing, and large lymph nodes around the back. Prevention of influenza is important. Uh, make sure that you talk to your patients about getting yearly vaccinations, especially those people that are at risk and uh, healthcare workers. Uh, important for hand washing and avoiding anybody who is infected. Signs and symptoms of the flu are fever, chills, myalgia, sore throat, cough, malaise, headache. Uh, therapeutic interventions would be acetaminophen, uh, avoiding aspirin, antiviral agents like Tamiflu. Uh, this has to be given within 48 hours of the onset of symptoms or most likely it won't work rest and fluids. There are some new viruses out there like the bird flu, SARS, which we talked about a little bit on the other slide, the swine flu, H1N1, and West Nile. You should probably review those a little bit just in case they ask you any questions about them on the NCLEX. Nursing diagnosis is upper respiratory infection, impaired comfort, hyperthermia, and 
risk for infection or transmission to others. Cancer of the larynx can be caused when a tumor originates in the voice box. Mutations that damage, damage cells in the larynx are often due to smoking. The larynx is part of the throat between the base, the tongue, and the trachea. It includes the superglottis, the glottis, or the vocal cords, and the subglottis. A primary tumor of the mucoso epithelium, which lines the entire length of the GI tract, can contribute to cancer of the larynx. It can also metastasize to the lungs, the liver, and the lymph nodes. Cancer of the larynx is associated with smoking and alcohol and is more common in men. Signs and symptoms of cancer of the larynx include hoarseness, changes in the voice, pain, dyspnea, cough, dysphagia, and airway obstruction. It's diagnosed through laryngoscopy, CT scans, and MRI. Therapeutic interventions include radiation, chemotherapy, and a possible larynectomy. Post-op nursing diagnoses may include ineffective airway clearance, acute pain, impaired verbal communication, etc. Make sure these patients have something at the bedside to communicate with you as well when they come out of surgery because they may not be able to talk. So, well, they're not going to be able to talk actually, so you're going to need a pad and pencil at the bedside for them or some form of communication. Sometimes uh, these voice boxes can be placed on the patient that will help vibrate and conduct sound so that they can talk. Uh, this is just a link for a couple YouTube videos if you're interested on chest tubes and tra and trachs. Thank you.